hello and welcome everyone to Monarca Minerals Live Summit today, hosted by Six. We're joined today by President, CEO, and Director Carlos Espinoza and Michael Smith, Executive Vice President of Exploration and QP. Carlos and Michael will walk us through a company presentation and give provide an update. And then after we will be opening up the floor for questions. So as a reminder, you can submit your questions at any time on the Q&A panel on the right hand side of the screen. And we'll try to get to them after the presentation. And as always, the summit is being recorded. It will be available to watch afterwards on six.com. But without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you, Carlos, to kick things off. Thank you very much, uh, Dasha. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, on this presentation. Uh, the main reason of today's presentation is to share with you some of the, some of the recent results we have in, in the drilling program in San Jose project. Um, for those of you who doesn't know much about Monarca, we want to talk a little bit about the company, but most of the presentation is going to be really focused on the recent results and the uh, pre-release we, uh, uh, we presented yesterday to the market. Um, so initially, we're going to start with the uh, forward-looking statements. And also, I want to mention, you can download this presentation from, from, from the website uh, in case you want to go in more details of, on any of this uh, information, um, because some of the slides uh, really go uh, very, very quick. Just to start, I want to mention we have a we are exploration company listed on TSX Venture with three assets in, in Mexico, two in in the state of Durango and one in the state of Chihuahua. Um, we have a very good team, both in Canada and Mexico. The geological team is uh, led by Michael Smith, who joined us today on the, on the presentation. And um, he has tremendous experience, more than 40 years experience working in uh, exploration companies, but also producing companies such as Barry Gold or Continental Gold. So he has a tremendous experience in the whole spectrum from exploration to production and he's adding a lot of value to the company. We have our share price around 8 cents today. We have been around 10, 12 for the last few weeks. Um, we have about uh, under $1 million of cash in, in the bank and we are doing well with that. Um, we have uh, some of institutional investors such as Crescat, um, which is uh, very, very supportive to, to Monarca and also insiders participating on the, on the company. Um, I don't want to spend much time on the uh, board <laughs> management. I just want to mention that we have a, a mix of skills between uh, financial, legal, and technical expertise, and even social skills um, on, 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 on the board and the management that help us, even though we're still a small company, help us to have a good balance in the different fields. And I really want to stop here and pass the, the, the microphone to Mike, and let's go to really what is uh, most important, which is our projects. Yeah, thank you very much. And Mike, over to you. Welcome, everybody, to our, our presentation today. As Carlos mentioned, we're going to be focusing uh, on uh, some of the assay results having come in from our drilling program. Uh, we have three project uh, projects in Mexico, as Carlos mentioned. Uh, one is the Tahaman project, which is in the state of Durango. It has a, an inferred resource of almost 29 million ounces of silver at 45 grams per ton. And we also have nearby the Tahaman project, the San Lucas project, which is uh, also very close to the capital uh, uh, of the state of Durango. And it's very importantly, critically located very close to Argonaut Gold San Augustine mine, which is now in production. And then we have the San Jose project, which is in the northern uh, portion of uh, Chihuahua, Mexico. It's only about 35 kilometers south of the border with New Mexico. There's great uh, infrastructure in the area, paved highways and the like. It's a large land position, about 5,900 hectares in total. And we were able to start drilling back in August and have completed that drilling. We completed 4,640 meters of RC drilling, primarily targeting the uh, IP anomalies that were established in a geophysical survey that we did uh, two years ago. The San Jose project is also located uh, very close to an operating uh, uh, underground base metal and silver mine, the Bismarck mine. It's only about uh, 50 uh, kilometers northwest of the Bismarck mine. 
The area has excellent infrastructure. Uh, it's located about an hour and a half drive west of uh, Juarez, Mexico, which is right across the river from El Paso. And very close to the project area is a small agricultural uh, settlement of Guadalupe de Victoria. The property was acquired in uh, 2019 to acquire a 100% interest in the project for a total price of $150,000. The uh, owners, uh, previous owners, retain a 2% uh, NSR, of which we can buy half of that uh, for $100,000 down the road uh, once we were to uh, get into production. The mineralization we see there is polymetallic uh, with base metals and precious metals and with a lot of mineralization associated with uh, four different intrusive rocks, uh, which are intruded into limestone, giving us uh, scar mineralization and in one of the drill holes, we, we drilled carbonate replacement uh, mineralization and marbles. The area had very, very limited uh, production back in the early 1970s. Uh, none of the mines were very big. The two largest mines are shafts that are about 10 meters deep only. And uh, the mineralization that was uh, mined in those locations, and there's also about a dozen small uh, uh, surface workings, uh, uh, small pits. Uh, we saw that there was a lot of mineralization in the area. We, I, we looked at it as mineralization in the narrower veins at, that are at the surface that was uh, leaking from something larger at depth. And we did uh, ended up doing a geophysical survey that I'll get into the details of in just a moment. The exploration model that we have is based on the Bismarck mine that I already mentioned. It's a scar deposit associated with an intrusive, and in the image on the right in color, you can see a cross-section through that deposit. The initial inferred resource was about 13 million tons at 52 gram per ton silver with 11% zinc and lead and copper. Uh, we have similar style of mineralization at San Jose. You can see in the image that the mineralization at the surface was very sparse, just very thin uh, zones of mineralization, very much like what we see at the San Jose project. And so in the cross section on the right in purple is a mineralizing intrusive and on the left in the blue and the green are the limestones, very similar to the geological environment that we have in San Jose. Uh, the work that was done there started in the early 1990s approximately when Peñola saw the potential uh, based on the surface mineralization and they did uh, IP work and magnetics work and the IP indicated uh, significant anomalies at depth so they did a drilling program eventually resulting in the resource that they started out with. Uh, they have are down right now they uh, uh, ran out of in the short term uh, or in front of them so they're doing on standby right now doing development work to continue mining there but it was in production for uh, about 25 years well almost 30 yeah, about 25 years. Um, and so the mineralization that, uh, that they have there gives us an idea of the potential that we have at San Jose. The mineralization we have at San Jose uh, is associated with four different intrusive events. Uh, in early uh, monzonite, uh, later uh, uh, granite diorite, which now appears based on the drilling that we've done, responsible for most of the mineralization that we see at the location. And we also have drilled a different intrusive that we don't see at the surface, which is a biotite porphyry, which has magnetite. And that appears to explain the uh, one of the large magnetic anomalies we have in the southwest uh, corner of the geophysical survey area. The exoscar mineralization that we see at the surface and now verified with the drilling is dominantly crossularite, uh, plus or minus diopside. And we also see strong silicification associated with some of the mineralization uh, that occurs there. In particular, the, the quartz veining that we see is related to gold mineralization that we've now uh, have one intercept through at the Guadalupana mine. So this is a summary of the work that, uh, that we did in terms of the geophysical work. Uh, on the right-hand side uh, of the image, you can see the land position. It's a large land position. Um, the area where we did the geophysical survey is indicated with the oval. 
uh, over one of the uh, particular mining concessions that are there. And uh, we see that there's a lot of uh, uh, strong geophysical indications of mineralization uh, in the project area. So we've only looked at a very small portion of the project area. And we now realize that the, based on work that was done this summer, that the mineralization in terms of alteration at the surface extends for at least three kilometers to the southeast. The work that uh, we initially did uh, in terms of geological mapping, mapping and sampling was we did 167 uh, as said, uh, samples were taken uh, at the property. They were all chip channel samples across the mineralization. We had grades up to almost 10 grams per ton gold and 257 grams per ton silver. The geophysical survey uh, covered uh, a significant portion of the area dominantly where the old mines are located. Our, our drilling, no drilling had ever been done at the property. But we've drilled now 4,640 meters spread out amongst 15 different drill holes. The drill hole depths range from 140 meters to 408 meters deep. And they range from being vertical to angle holes uh, attempting to cut across the structures. All the sampling was done on five foot intervals, which is pretty standard for RC drilling. Um, we've received assays on seven of the holes. We have another eight holes we're expecting to get assays on soon, probably by the end of this month. Uh, we see that in every one of the drill holes we drilled, that we have very strong alteration with exoscarns, uh, exoscarn mineralization, carbonate replacement mineralization, uh, significant intercepts of uh, endoscarn in the intrusives, uh, as well as a very strong solidification associated with the gold mineralization uh, in, in the intrusive rocks, primarily in the granite diorite. And we do see potassic alteration in some of the drill holes, which is indicating porphyry style mineralization possibly in the area. And we'll be doing additional drilling down the road to try to identify the extent of that. Uh, the mineralization that we see is very widespread from the very southern portion, southernmost drill hole that we put in, uh, all the way to the northern, most northerly drill holes. Every one of the drill holes had significant alteration, and we see that it's a very large hydrothermal system uh, right now at about approaching three kilometers in strike length with multiple intrusives and mineralization hosted in the limestones as well as in the intrusive rock. So the geophysical survey that we did uh, it's indicated the results of that in the uh, lower uh, left two colored images. Uh, one is the magnetics that was, work that was done. Uh, you can see that there's a large magnetic anomaly in the southwest portion of the geophysical survey grid area. Um, that's related probably to the uh, biotite porphyry that we see in a few drill holes portion of that uh, magnetic anomaly. And then there's a smaller anomaly to the north. Um, then we, if we take a look at the IP work, the very bright red uh, and pink colors and the yellow colors is where we had a very strong chargeability response in, in, the, uh, in the IP survey work that was done. And you can see the clear association uh, with the intrusive rock. So uh, related to the northernmost magnetic anomaly, we have significant IP response in the geophysical work that was done. Uh, and we followed up on that with some of the drilling. And we also have uh, uh, IP response uh, related to the lower magnetic anomaly. So we're seeing in this the classic picture of buried uh, intrusive rocks that are giving us a magnetic response, as well as then above and around the mark margins of those stocks that are indicated by the magnetic survey, we have the strong IP response in the geophysics that was done. And so our drilling primarily focused on drilling the IP anomalies as a starting point. Next slide, please. This is the drilling that's been done. Uh, the drilling that's been done is superimposed uh, uh, on top of the IP anomalies that we have. And I've also indicated where the margins are, the magnetic anomalies. So we've done drilling all the way from the south end of the property at the Guadalupana mine, where we have three drill holes, SJ0104 and 13. Uh, SJ01 hit significant gold mineralization towards the end of the hole. And I'll get into a bit more of the details on the mineralization that was drilled in a, a subsequent table that shows a summary of some of the some of the highlights of some of the drilling that's been done. We also drilled, uh, did some drilling in the easternmost uh, large IP anomaly with drill holes uh, three, ten, and fifteen, and fourteen. 
So all of that uh, drilling hits strong alteration uh, in the intrusive rocks as well as exoscarn in the carbonate rocks. So we have a good success story there following up on the IP response. And then the largest IP anomaly is where the majority of the drilling that was done. Uh, we have uh, uh, drill holes number 2, 11, 12, 8, 7, and 5, and 6, as well as 9 further to the north. Uh, the drilling uh, was uh, limited in terms of where we could drill. You can see the drill holes uh, uh, SJ2, 11, 12, 8, 7, and 5, and 6 are drilled right at the western edge of the, uh, the colonia, the, the surface that uh, the surface owners where we have an agreement with them to do the drilling. And that drilling was uh, dominantly angled to the west, cutting across the con. Uh, uh, trying to cut across the contract between the intrusive rocks to the east and the carbonate rocks to the west. Uh, what we saw in all of those drill holes was very strong mineralization in the intrusive rocks. And so the large IP anomaly with the very bright colors, that's almost entirely underneath carbonate rocks that are exposed at the surface and where we have limestones that are very strongly dolomitized, very strong alteration. And the drill holes that we have there angled to the west are dominantly uh, in the intrusive rock where we saw lots of uh, endoscarn uh, as well as some exoscarn and then very strong alteration in the granite diorite right to the west. So as soon as we finalize the agreement, which is moving along well with the Ahivo, then we'll be able to drill and get right on top of those large IP anomalies. So the geological picture that we see there with all of the very strong alteration and mineralization of the drill holes is we have an intrusive that is dipping to the west and then above that we have the carbonate rock. So where we have uh, contact with those in mineralizing intrusives as well as then above that the limestones, we have an excellent environment for follow-up drilling to chase down the uh, scar mineralization which will be at the contact between the intrusive rocks and the carbonate rocks. This is the table summarizing the drilling. In SJ01, uh, towards the end of the hole, uh, we have an intercept of 3 meters of 4 grams per ton gold, and within that uh, there's 1.5 meters of uh, 6.7 grams per ton gold, along with lead and zinc. So the vein that we drilled there, we're still not clear on the geometry of it. We did, uh, uh, after that initial hole, SJ01, uh, produced good results. We went back and have put in a couple of more holes attempting to cross the same vein. It appears to be a vein that's hosted in the granite diorite uh, with a, a, high a high silica content. It's basically a quartz vein with about 5% uh, total sulfide content. And then SJ03 was drilled to the north. Uh, we uh, have a 1.5 meter intercept of 0.1 gram per ton gold with 1% zinc, so interesting and very strong mineralization. It's associated with exoscarns and endoscarns. SJ08, we drilled uh, at a uh, fairly uh, shallow depth between uh, 1.5 meters of uh, 80 gram per ton silver, along with a third, a third of a percent copper, a third of a percent lead, and 1.5% zinc. So we have excellent uh, exoscar mineralization there. Uh, we also drilled uh, 6.1 meters of 0.36 gram per ton uh, gold. Uh, along with 1% uh, copper. And that's one of the things we're seeing now in the drilling to the north is that the copper and gold mineralization tend to uh, come together. We also drilled uh, 1.5 meters of 0.84 gram per ton gold, and then another intercept of 3 meters of 3.1 gram per ton gold, which includes 1.5 meters of 4.3 grams per ton gold, along with 53 uh, grams per ton silver. We also have uh, results from SJ10. It drilled 1.5 meters of 0.92 grams per ton uh, uh, gold. SJ11 drilled 3 meters of 0.86 grams per ton gold, gold, right very close to the surface. And that mineralization was is carbonate replacement mineralization, sulfide replacement of the carbonate rocks that's now been oxidized to a Dawson. And then we also drilled uh, another uh, intercept that had 4.6 meters, 0.1 gram per ton, uh, 1.3 gram per ton uh, uh, gold, along with uh, about a third of a percent copper. And then the uh, drill hole number 15 was just anomalous throughout its entire length, uh, but no significant, uh, very high high grade assays like we've, uh, we're reporting in some of the other holes. 
at this point, we don't really know because of the, the, the amount of drilling is limited what the true thicknesses are on any of this mineralization. And we hope with uh, follow-up drilling and the assays that are still pending to be able to nail down a bit more what the geometry is, in particular of the vein we drilled in SGO1, where we can actually come up with an estimate of the true, true thickness. All of the drilling uh, showed very strong alteration, and we have very long intercepts of very anomalous gold mineralization. For example, in drill hole number eight, we have 279 meters of continuous anomalous gold mineralization uh, with an average grade of 07 grams per ton gold. Obviously, that's not economic, but the point here is that we have very long areas of intercepts in the drilling of anomalous gold mineralization and copper mineralization. Also in drill hole 8, in the same area of the gold mineralization, we have 223 meters uh, of uh, anomalous uh, copper mineralization, uh, averaging 0.11% copper, and one of the intervals is, is as high as 1.16% copper. SJ-10 also hit 91 meters of anomalous gold. SJ-11 hit 250 meters of anomalous gold mineralization. SJ-11 hit 127 meters of anomalous copper mineralization. And then SJ-12 drilled 257 meters of anomalous gold mineralization with uh, one grade up to 0.11, uh, up to 0.155 parts per million or grams per ton gold. And we also had a similar long intercepts of anomalous anomalous uh, copper mineralization in SJ-12. So the point of this particular image is that uh, there's an extensive area of mineralization on the property, uh, uh, striking almost three kilometers in strike length, that has been now verified by the drilling. Uh, we have uh, significant anomalous gold and copper grades uh, throughout the uh, entire spread of drill holes from the south to the north, uh, which gives us very excellent exploration potential. So we're dealing with a very large hydrothermal system, and it's a question of doing additional drilling to find out uh, where the higher concentrations of the metals that we're chasing will be. Next slide, please. This is just a quick picture of the RC rig that uh, was uh, in the process of drilling. Most of the drilling was done dry. Uh, we did hit significant water, uh, depending on the hole, between 100 and 150 meters deep. And in some cases, we had to go to uh, wet drilling using a rotary splitter that you see on the, on the right. And once all the samples were put together, uh, we packaged them. The assay lab uh, came from Chihuahua City, about a five hour south of the project, and they picked up and took custody of all the samples from the location where they were in, uh, safeguarded uh, to their prep facility uh, in the city of uh, Chihuahua, in Chihuahua City to the south. We did all the drilling, as I mentioned, on the Colonia land where we have Agreement, which has been ratified by the uh, Mexican Motor Republic, allowing us to put in drill roads as well as the drill pads, which were completed obviously in advance of the drilling. Along with that, uh, we also have the permit for the drilling and environmental assessment was done and we received a permit uh, to, to do the drilling and to build the roads and the pads. Uh, the drilling was done by Lane. They did a really great job for us drilling the 4,640 meters of drilling. The average penetra penetration rate that they were getting with the RC rig was about 90 meters a day. Uh, the geophysics was done by Matrix uh, out, of, out of Canada. And uh, I mentioned earlier, but to the south, we found about a three kilometer extension of the alteration to the southeast uh, in terms of uh, being able to see uh, altered intrusive rocks along with strongly dolomitized limestones and fractures that are mineralized with iron oxide. So we have just completed a stream sediment pan concentrate sampling program in that entire south area and is basically throughout the mining concession just to give us bullseye for additional geological mapping and sampling. Next slide, please. This map shows the area where we have the agreement with the uh, Colonia. That's the uh, outline in uh, uh, 
in an orange color. Uh, you can see the roads that were already there are indicated in, in red and black. And then we added the roads that you can see in blue with a uh, grilling pad for each one of the holes that were done. And you can also see the uh, distribution of the old uh, mine workings that are in the area from the south end of the, uh, of the area where we have the agreement with the Colonia all the way to the north end of the, uh, of the area. Next slide, please. This provides an example of the kind of targeting that we were doing with the uh, with the drilling. Uh, you can see uh, at the top is the location of the drill hole. It was collared in uh, monzonites, which are in pink, and it was angled westerly into the limestones. And uh, you can see then in the cross section with the IP work, the uppermost of the two colored images at the bottom, you can see that drill hole basically targeting the IP anomaly. Uh, every one of the IP anomalies that we drilled are uh, have significant amounts of sulfide minerals, dominantly pyrite, but also sphalerite and galena and calcopyrite. And in some cases, uh, molybdenite in, in areas to the north. Now I'll talk a bit about Tahaman for those who are not familiar with the project. It's very close to the capital city of Durango, Mexico. Uh, it's about 1,700 hectares and it's got great access. There's a paved highway to the town of Nuevo Ideal and then the project area is about 10 kilometers southwest of the town of Nuevo Ideal. There's great infrastructure in the area. It's an agricultural valley so there's lots of labor in the area. Mines are operating in the area. And so the drilling that was historically done there was done up through 2007. And uh, there are two portions to the deposit that have been identified. It's the only project uh, uh, that we have where we have a, a resource that was done several years ago, uh, where we have a total of uh, approaching 20 million tons at 45 grams per ton silver uh, with a total contained silver content of uh, approaching 29 million ounces. We also recognize recently that there are very high grade feeder veins that are below the mineralization which starts at the surface which was historically drilled. Uh, we have grades in some of those feeder veins up to 6 meters of 1,400 gram per ton silver along with 5% combined lead zinc. This slide uh, shows you several uh, aspects of the project. Uh, one is the upper right hand corner of the image shows the drilling that was done. There's two portions to the deposit. The southern portion is Los Mantos and the northern portion is Cerro Prieto. 215 drill holes were done, most of which were RC holes and all of the drilling was very shallow, nothing over 200 meters deep uh, because at the time they were looking at this as having open pit mineable potential. Uh, for, because of that they also uh, did metallurgical testing uh, which is summarized in the lower right hand corner uh, in the table. You can see the kind of recoveries that were obtained in both uh, column leach tests as well as bottle roll tests uh, generally in the, in the 50 and 60 percent range which is pretty typical. The mineralization there, uh, the silver mineralization is all uh, hosted in uh, acanthite as well as native silver and so the amenability to direct cyanidation is very positive and what's going on there is that in many deposits the silver is tied up with uh, lead minerals and in this particular project it's not. Uh, the table in the lower left shows some of the intercepts that we have. Uh, we have intercepts like the third one from the top on the left, uh, 89 meters of 620 grams per ton silver. So we hope to be able to get into that project and do additional drilling down the road once we advance uh, additional relationship with the uh, community there. Next slide please. The other project is San Lucas. Uh, it's a small concession package. Uh, we've been uh, in contact uh, with the owner of surrounding concessions to expand the land position beyond the 80 hectares. Uh, very importantly, it's only located. Uh, it's located only about four kilometers away from Argonaut Gold's. San Agustin mine, which is now in production. It's an open pit uh, gold mine. Uh, from the uh, ridge line where we did some sampling a couple of years ago, you can see the, uh, the mine off to the northwest. So we're in elephant country being in the area of operating uh, silver mines and gold mines. Uh, the uh, One of the areas where we did some sampling a couple of years ago uh, where we have uh, about 270 meters of strike length on two parallel veins which are part of the main shear zone, uh, we did uh, 
the sampling program where we collected 89 samples at the surface. One of those samples was at 110 grams per ton gold along with 168 grams per ton silver with lead mineralization. Um, the average of the samples that we took there, not counting the 110 gram very high grade intercept, was 3.22 grams per ton gold. So the mineralization is uh, pretty strong at the surface and the area certainly uh, warrants a follow-up drilling, especially with deeper drilling. Because again, like in Tahaman, the drilling is a ma had a maximum depth of about 200 meters. And so additional work is justified to drill deeper to that, deeper than that, uh, following the vein system systems down dip and very close to the south we have uh, limestone rocks outcropping so we may have significant potential for uh, scar and manto style mineralization as we continue to do additional drilling down the road on that project. Hey, thank you very much Mike. Um, I, I always like to, to, to share this slide with, with the people because it's a comparable analysis uh, between Monarca and some other uh, explorer producer companies in, in the Americas. And basically what it shows is, is that Monarchus is still undervaluated company. Um, Inner Words is a company that has a lot of room to grow in terms of value compared to, to its peers. And uh, this is a great time to, to be part of Monarca. We are building a new story, especially with uh, San Jose. So we are expecting to, to, to have in the future uh, a greater value for the company and, and of course, uh, a reward for the investors. Um, I just want to touch base for a couple of minutes here or, or something like that regarding social management. Uh, we have been uh, responsible as a company trying to, to build this uh, social relationship with these communities where we are working. And we are doing different approach depending on the project. In the case of San Jose, we have been working really hard with the community. And uh, for those of you who are not well familiar how we are now, uh, in the area where we are working, it's one section is covered by a, a colonial, agricultural uh, colonia, and the other side is Ejido. So we need to sign two agreements with the two groups in order to have access to the, to the surface and continue drilling the, the, our program. Um, we signed the agreement initially with the Colonia. We had a great relationship with the Colonia. Uh, we rent houses there. So when we go down there, we all stay there. The geologists and the rest of the team, myself, are staying in, in those houses. Um, we are hiring local people to work with us and have been working really, really well so that the relationship with the community is, is, is strong. And now we are in, in advanced conversation with the Ejido, which is the other uh, part of the of the concession uh, to sign the agreement as well. And uh, the relationship with the Colonia had been a very good example for the Ejido of, of the benefits they could have if they uh, work together with us. So we're very happy with that. Uh, and we continue developing this, this strategy uh, with the, old, uh, the whole community to continue uh, growing together. Um, the Hammond is a different story. We have a uh, 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 implement a social risk assessment and, and we are working on a new community engagement because we heritage some issues with the community. So we are working on that and, and we are expecting to have a, a good success, especially after <coughs> having San Jose as a good example of how Mon Monarca can work with the community. Uh, San Lucas is an early stage engagement because as you saw on the presentation, we have a, a current, uh, a current we have a small um, a concession. We are trying to expand. Um, so as soon as we can expand the, the land package in, in San Lucas, we will be able to do more there uh, in terms of the community relation, as well as in terms of uh, exploration. And, uh, and the question, uh, uh, we always have every every company, every public company from investors. Why should I invest in your company instead of investing in other companies? And um, I think one of the uh, of the key aspects is uh, the the drilling program we just completed and still waiting for some of the essays uh, shows that is uh, we are finding a, a large mineralization. We need to work more to understand better how the the, the, the body. Uh, underground, but definitely it's it's a large mineralization. We are excited about it. We are talking about uh, 
uh, implementing a 10,000 meters uh, drilling program for next year because really, really shows a great potential. So that's that's one of the main reasons uh, investors should join us today. Uh, we have a portfolio of high uh, prospective gold and silver assets in Durango, of course, and, and Chihuahua. And as I mentioned before, uh, we're still uh, undervaluated compared to, to some of our peers. So I'm gonna stop here and uh, open the floor for any questions that you might have. Great, thank you so much, Michael and Carlos. Uh, we're gonna move on to the Q&A section. So if you do have a question, feel free to submit them. We have a few here already. So uh, based on the drilling results so far, what do you see regarding the exploration potential? Well, I, I think the exploration potential is excellent. You know, we you always learn a lot uh, when you do an initial drilling program. You get a better handle on the geometry of the mineralization. I'd have to say that one of the things that I'm the most impressed with is the just the large volume of alteration that we see in the rocks and in the northern area where we've now done enough drilling to see that there's a large area very strongly altered. Uh, intrusive rocks and above that uh, in outcrop we have dolomitized limestone so when we can get in uh, when we have the agreement with the ahito we can move the drilling to the west collar the holes further to the west and drill those down to the contact between the mineralizing intrusive and the carbonate rocks above and i think that there's excellent potential for significant scar mineralization there uh, with both base metals as well as precious metals Thank you. And what work will be done in the coming months to develop the phase two drilling program? We uh, right now uh, we have a preliminary geological mapping that was done a couple of years ago. Now with the drilling done, we've done more detailed mapping in the area where the drill holes are so we can get uh, cross sections built with a clear understanding of the distribution of metals that we see and the mineralization that we see. Uh, we're also doing some additional mapping to the west in the area of the limestones, trying to collect additional information. Uh, the mapping that was historically done shows multi-lithic breaches uh, to the west, uh, presumably with intrusive rocks mixed with the carbonates. So, so we see a lot of mineralization to the west uh, in the dolomitized limestones, and we're very excited about the potential at depth where those dolomitized limestones are in contact with the mineralizing intrusives, which could derive significant scar mineralization. Thank you. We have a question here from Warren. I might just ask for both of you to take a look so I don't, um, so I get the drill holes correct. But Warren is asking, when reviewing the your most recent drill results, what important information have you gathered with respect to higher grade hole SJ01-3M meter of 4.07 gold and 1.5 meter 6.66 and SJ08? dash 1.5 meter of 79.5 silver and the 1.5 meter of 4.29 gold and the 3.4 silver respectively related to IP and magnetic signatures. Hopefully that made sense. That mineralization uh, that was just referred to is a mixture of mineralization, in particular in drill hole number one, uh, where we drilled a quartz vein with lots of sulfides and significant gold grades, and that was hosted in intrusive rocks. So we followed up with a couple of more holes, uh, trying to cut that structure in three additional locations where we can get the strike and the dip, which will give us an idea about uh, where which way the mineralization is projecting. It probably strikes northerly, but until we have the drilling data, we won't know for sure. The drilling to the north, where we also had significant precious metal intercepts, as well as some copper and, and zinc mineralization that occurs in those drill holes, uh, the context is there is uh, that we have mineralization both in the limestones and exoscarn, as well as carbonate replacement deposit style mineralization, which has now been oxidized to Gaussian. And we also have mineralization in exoscarn and the uh, mineralization in the, in the intrusive rocks. Uh, the mineralization we see in intrusive rocks is a mixture, depending on where you look, of gold mineralization, almost always with uh, strong copper mineralization. So the geology picture, we're in the process of finalizing, putting together in the next, uh, through the end of the year, detailed geological analysis associated uh, with putting together cross sections so we can understand the geometry and finalize the drilling program.
Right now, based on the success that we've had, I'm planning 10,000 meters of drilling, a mixture of RC drilling and core drilling. And uh, that would work, be work that we would plan on doing probably in the April time frame starting next year. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Castera's question is, how many meters can you drill before another PP? The, the, the program Mike is, is, is proposing, 10,000 meters, uh, the budget is around 2.5 US dollars, million US dollars. Um, we currently have just below $1 million in cash. But also on the private, private placement, uh, we issue uh, warrants for the equivalent of $4.5 million. Some people start uh, exercising the warrants in the last two weeks, uh, but still we have probably 4.2 million warrants available that will expire on August next year. So um, I mention all this story because uh, we want to monitor how, how much uh, money we're going to get uh, from the warrants in the next few months, let's say from now until the end of the year, maybe early next year. And then we want to do a private placement probably early next year to to complement enough money for the for the 10,000 uh, meters uh, drilling program. So. I'm guessing at this point that probably we're going to raise something between two to three million dollars uh, early next year. Great, thank you so much. And uh, that is all the time we do have for today. So I want to thank you, uh, Carlos and Michael, for taking us through the presentation and providing that great update and uh, going through the live Q and A with us. Um, thank you for everyone who tuned in. If you do have other questions following this summit, feel free to reach out to Monarca Minerals directly. Their contact information can be found in the slide, but you can also find more information on their website, monarcaminerals.com. And a copy of this presentation is available for download under the handouts tab here, but also on their website. And uh, before we close out, I'll just pass it to you, Carlos, um, for any final comments. Well, thank you very much, Desha, and I just want to thank you, everybody, for attending uh, today to this presentation. We are excited about uh, the development in, in, in San Jose and the future of the property. So I just want to thank you for your interest, and please stay tuned for, for more news.